are discussing here uh, the reviews that some of the students did of other people's uh, papers uh, based on, on that list of questions that we had proposed for the reviews. Uh, and it is, uh, don't worry, I did not ask you to do any review because you had not sent any paper to be reviewed as well, right? So I only asked, uh, buenos dias, uh, I, only, I only asked uh, people to review if they had sent a paper. But one thing that we have to, okay, one thing that we have to, to buenos dias, buenos dias. yeah. No, no, but, but you can uh, you can be around uh, uh, and, and pay attention to what we're saying here because uh, the idea is uh, we will be discussing about the, you know, how it was for these people who did the review to review their colleagues' papers. Uh, but I think this is also interesting for uh, for you, if you wish, be, uh, be around. Uh, uh, if, you, if you think that you're learning something from this, be around. We're, we're talking about the impressions they had about reviewing their colleagues' papers. And these colleagues of yours who are here, they all submitted a paper. So they submitted their paper uh, and then they, they also had... Okay, yeah, sure, 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 be there. <laughs> um, uh, and besides, of course, you, you, you did not submit a paper, but we hope that maybe you submit a paper to AMSIS or to another conference later. Uh, and it's good to understand what we're discussing here. One of the things that Flavio was saying at the beginning is that when he was reading Patricia's paper, we, we didn't do double blind review here. Everyone knew who, whose papers they were reviewing. When he was reviewing her paper, he had the impression that the objective was presented very early in the paper, very early in the introduction of the paper, and then uh, he felt that, do I have to read the rest of the, the introduction? Because usually we, the introduction of the paper is a section where our main intent is to uh, keep building on, on the topic so that we, at the end, get to the objective and then the, the the, the, the reader says, ah, okay, now I understand why the author is doing this. Uh, it is a relevant topic because uh, there has been already some justification. I usually say that in academic papers, we are more concerned with a justification than the motivation. Uh, and I will have to make this clear to you that uh, sometimes I, I believe that if you look in the dictionary, motivation and justific justification may, may seem sort of similar. But for us, uh, my understanding here of, uh, of motivation and justification is motivation is uh, something very personal. You know, why did I choose this topic? Why am I studying, for example, uh, gender in IT? For example, uh, Patricia uh, or Mariana or Anise, you could say, you know, I see that there are a lot of researchers but most of them are male. And I want to understand why there are less female researchers than male researchers in this, uh, uh, in this um, field. And I want to do that because being a female, I think that we are sort of in a, in a, in a, in a disadvantage here and I want to understand. That, that's motivation because it's something that involves uh, the person's own uh, feelings and, and own values. Uh, it could also be a, a justification, right? Saying, uh, again, saying uh, a justification is more rational. Let's say a justification is something that is important for you, but will be important for everyone else. So maybe this picking here, this example of gender is not very, very good. I, I tend to think that it, 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 it is more motivational to women than men, right? But, but again, it shouldn't be, right? Uh, uh, again, we, we could have just a justification. Well, it's clearly the numbers are different. Anyone wants to study that, but but I want you to understand that, that the motivation is very personal. Uh, and the justification is something that will be important for anyone who's reading, uh, anyone in your field who's reading what you're doing. Uh, they will already understand, ah, okay, so this paper is important or, or this objective is important, this work is important because it's well justified here and I agree with the author that this is important, right? This is justification. Um, uh, why do we usually uh, say that we prefer to have a justification than the motivation. Do you have any idea of, about that? Why, why, why would that be so? Because, well, I, I will answer here, because basically we're still very positivistic in our research, right? Uh, we think that the, the reason for us to do something has to be very rational. And this rationale about, uh, about the research is uh, something that we inherited uh, from 
the hard sciences and from, from the way science built its own, let's say, ways of doing things uh, over time. Of course, uh, if you are um, do, doing some research that is that challenges that positivistic uh, approach, you may even claim the justification is not important. What is important, uh, what, what is important uh, for me as an author is to write about something that is relevant to me. Okay, notice, notice there's a lot of authorship there, right? You're, you feel uh, really in, strong as an author. The risk, again, seeing the world from a, 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 a more uh, positivistic uh, perspective is the risk is the world does not care about what you think. That happens, right? The world may say, well, this is very important to you, but you did not justify it in a way that I find it to be important to me as well. So I don't care. I mean, it's, it's a personal thing. Write literature, don't write science. See? So this is why uh, 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 I believe that considering that we are still, unless we are the, let's say, the rebels that want to, and, and, and it's important to have rebels in science, right? That challenge the way things are done uh, and promote new ways of doing things. But those rebels have to also, uh, being rational, they have to, to also acknowledge that they are going against a tradition, going against uh, the way things are usually done. And by doing that, they will face a lot of opposition. And it's opposition not because people are against their ideas simply, it's simply because people are not accustomed to their ways of, of doing things. Okay? So the more we get science to be more soft in, in, in the way it, it deals with human problems, the more space we will have for motivations uh, in addition to, to justifications. Right? Uh, but I still say, uh, for those who want to take the, the let's say, the, the easy path, I would say, justify your work. Uh, even if, if it is something that motivates you, make sure that what is a motivation for you is also a good justification to others. And then, uh, and then you will have a, a, an easier way. But usually what we do in the, the introduction is we justify our work, we justify the, the, the topic that we chose, and then we, and, and, and we end up and we end uh, the, the, the introduction, or very close to the end of the introduction, we present our, our objective. Right? But again, notice how framed we are when we are, when we are reviewing and the, and, and the, the editor or, or the conference, uh, the, the program chair of a conference says, I want you to answer these questions to me. Right? In fact, the, 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 the editor here is not asking you if, if the paper is good or bad. It's asking if the objective is clear, if, uh, if the work is justified in terms of relevant, relevance to the field. Notice, the editor is concerned. In this case, I, 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 I cut and paste this from, I don't even know where, from, from, from a conference that I that I was reviewing papers uh, recently, right? Notice that they're, they're concerned about the justification here. They're not asking for motivations. So even if the reviewer is uh, inclined to support research that is more personal somehow, uh, or that is, is less positivistic, when faced with these questions, uh, the, 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 the reviewer uh, I mean, those are the questions that are asked, right? Uh, and, 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 and so uh, the, the reviewer will have to answer these questions before saying uh, uh, that the paper was good or bad. Notice that having a few questions that are already asked sort of frame the way in which or, or pave the way in which the reviewer will work. Uh, and a reviewer that has this second question here, is the paper justified in terms of relevance to the, research, to, to, to the field of research, is much more inclined to provide a review that is positivistic in the sense, yes, it is justified, it made sense to me, uh, then if we had a question here, uh, is, is, the, is the author motivated to do his, his or her research? Notice. Uh, and then, then I would say, yes, uh, the author seems very motivated because if that was the question, we would be led towards uh, motivation. It doesn't usually appear there. So what I'm showing you is that even if you want to uh, go against the flow, you will find it harder because those who are in contact with your work will have to analyze it based on a framework that was prepared to go uh, along the flow and not against the flow.
Is that clear? <coughs> okay. Uh, and then, uh, well, uh, did you, uh, I, I don't know, Mariana, Patricia, when you read uh, your colleagues' uh, papers, uh, did you think that your colleagues paid attention in their introduction to justify their work well? Uh, could you notice that? Teacher está cortando um pouco, eu não sei se eu entendi direito, se ao ler o, o, o trabalho do Flávio, né? Sim. Se você entendeu a justificação que ele deu para a sua research. Sim, sim, eu entendi. Embora mm -hmm. é um assunto para mim, né, que não sou da área, bem complexo. Ok, então, isso é algo importante para nós discutir aqui. Muitas vezes, quando nós reviewing um paper, nós estamos reviewing um paper that is on a topic that we are not a specialist, right? Why does that happen? Should that happen? No. Uh, the, the ideal situation would be that we, we only received papers to review that were, uh, uh, that, that, that dealt with a, a topic that we are really good at, right? That we are, let's say, uh, we are experts and we can always give uh, support to the, to the writer's uh, work, not only uh, with respect to, to the format, to, to, to how the, 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 the paper was, was structured, but also on the content, right? Uh, so that's the ideal situation. Uh, it doesn't always happen, and, and, part, and, and that doesn't always happen for several reasons. One of them is that, unfortunately, I, I think that we have in academia more free riders than we should. We have a lot of people that are there, they know, well, people will value me for what I write, people will not value me for, for the reviews I do, or at least people will not know about it, so I will only write and I will write a lot, and other people will have the burden to review what I do, but I don't review what, what others do. Unfortunately, there, is, uh, 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 there are people that will, that, that will be developing their careers based on that. They don't have this uh, feeling of academia as being a community in which if we want to publish, if we want to write, we also have to read. We also have to. We are there to discuss ideas and, and, and help them uh, improve over time. É isso que eu achei interessante, professor, porque uh, ao mesmo tempo que não é a minha área, eu achei assim termos, né, que eu nunca havia visto e complexo. Eu consegui conseguiu ficar claro para mim qual era o objetivo, né, a justificativa dele também. Então eu achei muito yeah. muito interessante. And this is this is important. Uh, uh, and maybe this is a good uh, hint or a good uh, suggestion that I can give you. When you write an academic paper, although you're writing to your peers, you're writing to people that are the experts in that field, you expect uh, your, your paper is only going to be uh, considered a good and relevant paper if it helps other people that are as, uh, let's say, as knowledgeable about the topic as you are uh, to improve their own understanding of, the, of that topic. So this is why we, we always say that a paper or a dissertation or a thesis should try and bring uh, something new, right? Uh, we are trying to, let's say, to progress or to, to, to advance with the, with the borders of science. We want to expand the borders of science. We don't want to just keep doing something that someone else has already done. It's different to work that we do in, the, in college or, or as undergrads, where we only have to prove that we understood what others did before. Uh, the, the scientific work that is performed in, in in graduate programs, uh, let's say in a master's program or in a doctorate program, uh, uh, involves going further, going beyond where others have already been in terms of uh, uh, of, of uh, making sure that we we have something, we, we have we understand a, a problem in a way that nobody was able to understand before, simply because they did not spend the same time of uh, time uh, to analyze that. So it's a sort of a a cumulative uh, work that each um, researcher does, we, we go a little further than whoever was there before, and we are, we are expanding the knowledge of the whole field. Uh, so in that sense, it's important. Also, although we, we, are, we, we want to write for those people to read, it's also important that whatever we write is understandable, at least in, in general terms, by anyone else. So it would be great if you could write an academic paper and give it to, let's say, your brother or sister uh, or cousin who's not uh, an academic, uh, 
but who could read that and say, yes, I understood what you're talking about, or no, I didn't under understand what you're talking about. They may have difficulty understanding the details of, you know, of your work, but uh, we should write in a way that someone who's not a specialist is at least able to understand what our purpose was, what our objective was, uh, to understand, sort of reasonably understand the methods. Uh, uh, of course, sometimes the method gets very complicated, but, uh, but we want people to, to be able to understand the method, even if they're not specialists, and to have a, 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 a general understanding of the results we got. So, we, we do, we, although we write to specialists, we write to other uh, uh, scientists, let's say, uh, we do that uh, not forgetting that we will have readers that are not specialists. Therefore, we should always pay attention and make sure that whatever we write in our paper allows for someone who's not a specialist to read through and have uh, some understanding of what, 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 what we're doing. Uh, and again, and, and that also, I, I told you that many times we are invited to review a paper uh, and we're not specialists on the topic. If we're not specialists on the topic, of course, we will be, we will have to be convinced that the topic is relevant, that the objective is relevant, simply by what the author writes in the paper. So we will we'll get even uh, the, the more, uh, we'll get more convinced if the author is able to to show that he or she has done a lot of work surveying if what others have done. They have the author was concerned in checking if he or she is not reinventing the wheel, is not doing something that others have done before. So that has to also be part of the justification. Uh, part of that justification that appears in the introduction where where it leads to the objective, but also part of a, a justification, a more, let's say, fuzzy justification that also happens in the literature review uh, session of the paper, where you will show what others have done before in more detail, and it will become even clearer to the reader that what you're doing uh, is new, uh, it has a value on its own, it's not only copying and mimicking what others have done before. So it's good, uh, Patricia, when you say that you were able to read Flavius' paper uh, and have a general understanding of it in spite of not being a specialist. Many times that will happen. And when that happens, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we, we can check with the, the, the reviewer, uh, sorry, with the, with the editor. Uh, do you, if, if you need a specialist review here, uh, maybe I'm not the person. But if you need someone to review and check if this paper follows that, that structure that we, we usually have, if the objective is clearly stated, uh, the, the paper is well justified, uh, the author explores uh, the literature. You know, I don't, I don't have to know the literature myself to, to get a good impression of uh, the, the author's ability to show that he or she has explored the literature. Okay? Uh, if, uh, if in the literature review chapter there is a lot of work being cited that seems to be recent work, uh, if that work is uh, also, let's say, contrasted with work that has been uh, in the literature for quite a while, some more seminal work, if you, if you, if you have that, a strong uh, uh, feeling that the author uh, is competent in putting those, all those other, other authors to talk to one another, uh, that's something that I, I always think of the literature uh, review or, 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 or the session too, in which you're, you're uh, presenting the ideas of other authors, I always think of it as a, a session in which you, as the writer, is trying to put those authors to talk to one another, right? It's almost like if you, some of them will be dead already, right? Some, sometimes you have authors that wrote something a hundred years ago, uh, and that, 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 that argument con continues to be important for us. We rescue that author and, and, and let's say we, 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 we bring that uh, author alive again so that he or she can discuss with other authors. We, we, we can express their ideas one against the other and make, make it uh, appear to the reader almost if they were having a dialogue there. Right? So this is what we usually do. Uh, and, and this is the answer to this. Was the, uh, was the author uh, or has the author explored the, the, the existing literature uh, so that we as readers, even if we are not specialists in the field, so that we have a, a feeling that uh, the author is not reinventing the wheel, uh, that this is going to be uh, important here. Uh, and then we have, of, of course, notice that we have already uh, these two, two first questions here probably refer more to the introduction. Uh, this question here refers to the, sorry, this question here refers 
to the literature review or to the, the chapter in which you present the, your references. Uh, then we have a question here about the, the chapter or the ses session where you present your method. The method is how you dealt with the problem. Uh, I don't know, when you were reviewing your colleagues' uh, papers, were the writers able to convince you that, that the decision, the methodological decisions that they have taken, uh, I mean, the, the procedures that uh, led to solving the problems that they wanted to solve, were they able to convince you that those methodological procedures were the right ones, were sound ones, were, uh, uh, were the, the suitable way of getting to those results? Notice when, when uh, the editor or when, when the program chair of a conference asks you this, how much room do you have to review uh, a paper that presents only, let's say, the opinion of, uh, of an author? There's no, no, no room for that, right? Because uh, an opinion doesn't uh, result from methodological uh, from methodological procedure. Uh, so notice that these questions already sort of tell us that for that paper to, to, to be well assessed, to be well evaluated, it will have to have been written following that recipe that we discussed over the whole uh, research seminars here. Uh, it has to be, it has to be to have an, a, 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 a theoretical uh, basis uh, that will allow you to discuss some specific uh, practical, um, you know, data that you collected from a, f from a field interve uh, intervention. I mean, you have to go there and, and dirty your hands in the sense that you have to go there and, and collect data from, from uh, uh, primary data from, from the field. And then uh, you will have to somehow contrast your, your, pri uh, your primary uh, data with what uh, the literature already talked about the specific topic. I don't know if anyone has uh, any opinions to give us about uh, how you dealt with that or, or how, how well the, the, the colleague who was writing a paper, how well they, they described the, their methodological procedures. Does anyone have anything to say about that? And we don't have to think of uh, any fancy method methodological procedures. Of course, in quantitative methods, uh, we already have a lot of statistical tools that we can use and that are well accepted uh, in the field and that will help us make sure that the reader understands our methodology as being uh, the, the right methodology to use. But the met methodological procedures just have to make sense to the author and also to the readers. The readers, uh, you, you may create a new method. Many times that happens, right? Uh, a researcher has a problem <coughs> uh, that he or she wants to solve. Uh, the researcher doesn't think or, or, or revisiting what others have done before. The researcher doesn't find any methods that he or she believes to be the right way of solving that problem. Then they create a method. So we, 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 there's no problem in generating a new method to solve a specific problem. Uh, in fact, uh, some researchers end up giving us two different, uh, um, uh, let's say, uh, results from their papers. The actual results that are interesting to the field, and also sometimes the methodological approach that was used that can be used by others in the future. Others may say, well, you know, this guy invented a way of solving this kind of problem that can be used to solve other problems as well. So. In the future, people will refer to the methodological procedures that was, were used by that uh, author to, to, to solve other people's uh, problems. I remember once, uh, some 20 years ago, I, I had one of my master's students was, um, he was studying, uh, uh, basically he was studying appropriation of technology or, or, or acceptance, um, that there's a lot of acceptance or adoption of, of technology in, a, in, a, in a, an organization. And the first survey that he did, he was really disappointed because all the answers that he got for his questionnaire were exactly those that would seem to be the, 
you know, the proper answers. Right? Uh, and then I told him, you know, uh, I mean, we don't, we don't need to go to the literature to know that when you ask people questions uh, and their answers may make them feel bad about them, uh, they may not necessarily fake their answers, but they may have a, a tendency to answer it in a way that they will look better. Right, so there is, this is something that happens many times when we're collecting data. We, we think that we are collecting the true data, but we are actually collecting, uh, many times we're collecting people's impressions about what, what, what is true, and, and, and that's not necessarily true. Uh, other times we collect them, their own, uh, how they so realization of what, what, what happens, their own perception of reality, but based on, on what makes them feel that they are relevant, what makes them feel that they are, they are important in the process or whatever, right? So, uh, what do you think that uh, people's answer will be, for example, if, if in a situation where you were trying to analyze if people are, are um, um, how would I say, are, are, are adopting, uh, or in fact, are, are, are accepting a technology and notice it's a technology that the boss thinks that's a good technology. And then you go there and, and, and ask the person, do you like using this technology? How are you engaged with it? There is a, well, people may answer yes for two reasons. For survival, when they think that if they, they answer no, their boss will know about it and they will, and then they will say, well, so this guy is going against my, what, what I'm proposing here. Or, or they may say yes, simply because Although they do not agree with it, uh, they think that that's agreeing with it is, is the, the, the right thing to do. Uh, so we have to be very careful with what we, we ask people because uh, they may answer what they think that we would like to hear or they may answer uh, what they think that will look, make them look better in the picture, let's say. Uh, well, going back to my students, so he was disappointed with his answers because uh, they, they, had, they clearly had a, a software that had been installed in a, in a large organization here in Brazil uh, that uh, he, as a, as a researcher, thought that was, at least to some extent, a failure. But th when he went there and, and asked people, everyone thought it was great. And then I told him, what if we change our methodological procedure? In instead of asking them what they think about the software, we asked them what their colleagues think about the software, what they think that their colleagues think about the software, right? Let's say that there were a hundred people that use the software. When we asked them, each one of them, what do you think of the software? They all said, oh, it's very, really good. We, uh, it makes us more efficient and everything. And then we asked it differently. We asked them, uh, uh, do you think that, the, do, do your colleagues, do, do people that work with you think that this the software makes them more efficient? And you know, surprisingly what happened we started getting different answers. Instead of when we, let's say it was a hundred people that had to answer, they first they were answering about themselves, right? What we asked their own impressions. And then they gave us, let's say their fake impressions, the impressions that would make their, their bosses feel good about it or the, 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 the answers that would make them feel less risky about it or whatever. When we started asking them, well, instead of, knowing what you think of the software, what do your colleagues think of it? All the 100 were saying that their colleagues didn't like it. So their impression about their colleagues was that their colleagues were not liking the software. Notice, it was the same 100 people talking about the same software. The only change in, in the methodology that we did was changing questions from the first person to the third person. Instead of asking what each of them thought of it, we asked them what they thought that their colleagues thought of it. Uh, this change in methodology, I, I mean, we had not seen at that stage, some 20 years ago, we had not seen anyone else doing that. Unfortunately, uh, uh, well, in fact, nowadays, 20 years after, I think that the, 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 the dissertation of this student of mine would have had, if we had uh, put a, a spotlight on, on the, this methodological procedure that we used, uh, it would today be seen much more of a, 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 as a contrib contribution uh, with respect to methodological procedures than the results themselves, right? But if, at that stage, we focused on uh, showing uh, the results that we had obtained, and uh, we lost the opportunity of, of showing the world that we had thought of a, a different methodological procedure to deal, to deal with that, uh, with that uh, problem specifically, and that could help others deal with other problems. So the same way that today we have 
many methods that, that are named after those who, who developed them, uh, maybe we could have a method here named by my students or, or, or named after my students uh, saying that you shouldn't ask people questions uh, that maybe the, right, the answer that they, 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 they should give you would either embarrass them, would put them um, down or whatever. In those cases, you should try to uh, ask them about what, what, their, what their peers uh, experience because by knowing what their, their peers experience and then asking their peers about what they think, we would we'll get to the, to, to the same, let's say, to, the, to, to solve the same problem, but in a more accurate way because uh, people will find it easier to say that their colleagues resist. They don't, but their colleagues do, right? And when, when we, you have everyone saying that their colleagues resist, they don't, then we know, yeah, there, there's, there's an issue there, there's a problem. Well, all of that to say that sometimes uh, the methodological procedures that you develop may be a, a, a more interesting contribution to the field than even the results you get. So pay attention to people's methodological procedures that they, because they may inspire your own, your own work in the future and never put your methodological procedures down. Sometimes it's a simple idea that you have, but it may um, become something uh, important um, for, for other people's works in the future. And you may be more cited uh, based on, on, on the value of your methodology than really the results you got with a specific work. Okay. But it's, it's important that uh, you are able to argue for the, 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 the procedures that you're, that you're taking. Uh, and it's important that you, uh, that you convince your readers that the methodological procedures that you took were the right ones, or at least were right for that problem. They may not be the only possible way of solving that problem, but, but at least they represent a reasonable way of solving that problem and therefore the results uh, are trustable, uh, the, the results are, you know, uh, are what one could expect as being reasonable results. Okay. But notice how, again, uh, I have to keep reinforcing this, notice how having these questions asked, we already frame the mind of the reviewer to look for specific things in the, in the paper that will end up making the reviewer like the paper, paper better or not depending on what they, the, the reviewer finds in the, in the paper. Okay. And, and see how just looking at these questions, we can already think of uh, the structure of our papers when we write, right? When we're, we are, we're reviewing, we're being asked those things, these things here, and then we think, gee, when I write my papers, I do not pay too, uh, that much attention to this specific, let's say, to solving, uh, to, 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 to making sure that the, whoever reads my paper will be able to, to answer this specific question. So it's, this is why I, I keep saying, the more you review, the better you will write, because of course these questions will vary a little bit from one conference to the other, depending on, for example, if you are in a very, um, in, 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 if you are in, 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 a, in, a, in an area or in a sub area of your field where people are trying to challenge the old methods, uh, the old ways of doing things, this may change a lot, but again, even in that case, uh, uh, this will, will uh, if, even if they change the questions, the questions that they have will somehow uh, format the way that the reviewer is going to think about a specific uh, paper. Um, and then, uh, of course, so, so notice here, section one, introduction, section two, literature review or the like, Section three, methodology, or tools and, me tools and methods or whatever. Uh, section four of the paper, your results. Okay, after, you know, doing your research, what is there that you, you know, what, what is the, uh, the, the new knowledge that you bring to the scientific world? Uh, this is a session that's where you will present the findings of your, your research, uh, in which ways you have uh, you challenge uh, knowledge that existed before, in, in which ways you expand knowledge that existed before based on the data that you collected and the analysis that you were able to, to make. And then a, a fifth session. Remember, I mean, can you see the template here? You know, a uh, fifth session with uh, here with the, the conclusion. 
right? But can you see these questions being a, let's say, a proxy to our templates? If you didn't have a template for writing your papers, but you understood that uh, review, uh, so that, uh, that, that the editor of a journal where you want to publish will ask these questions to the reviewers, how much does simply having a look at these questions changes the structure of the paper that you will write? Possibly a lot, right? Well, or maybe not if you already use our template, <laughs> uh, because that template was built based on, on uh, you know, questions like these that appear over and over, uh, regardless of which journal we're talking about. But it's interesting here that uh, they ask, are the conclusions based on the results of the study? And why is this interesting? I have read many, many papers, many papers that are still being you know, reviewed in, in terms of, of, of being improved. I've seen many times authors that when they get to the conclusion session, they conclude based on things that they have in their minds, not on their data, not, not on contrasting their data with, uh, with the literature review or whatever. They conclude about something else. Of course, that turns the paper into a very weak paper because if you use a scientific method, if you, if you, if you develop here a, a methodological procedures that will allow you to solve a problem, and then after you solve that problem, you conclude on something different to that, or you, you, or you expand your conclusion to, to situations that your methodological procedures would not allow you to, the paper becomes, the results become invalid. Uh, so I see it many times in papers that are, are being reviewed. Uh, uh, one of the things that we have to say, please conclude, make, make uh, you know, conclusions about what you have studied. Do not go beyond that because that's not scientific. That, that becomes only your opinion about something. You can only conclude about the, 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 the data that you have. Okay? And uh, uh, we, of course we see much, many, uh, much, less, uh, much less problems with that in papers that are published because reviewers have already been there to help authors understand, no, you cannot conclude this because this goes beyond what your method allows, for example. Very, very common, for example, for someone who develops a qualitative uh, study, uh, which allows, different qualitative studies allow us to, to have a better understanding of a, a phenomenon, but it, it, it only allows you to understand that phenomenon better in that particular, in that particular situation, right? You cannot, uh, based on a case study, um, uh, generalize the results to all other situations. The method simply does not allow for that. But many times we see, we see people um, developing uh, case studies and trying to use that case study to, to predict how things will happen in other situations. It's impossible. The method doesn't allow for that. So do not conclude on what you cannot conclude. Right? I think that uh, in the papers that you read, most of them are not uh, papers that have already... Um, that, that are already ready. So uh, many of the papers that you submitted are drafts of papers in which you, you're still telling what you will be doing next. By the way, uh, there is a, the possibility of uh, submitting to AMSIS. You can, you, you can also submit work that is in progress, right? You, you don't have to, uh, you, you don't need to submit papers only about research that has already been completed. Uh, if you go to the, to the AMSIS, uh, Web page. I don't know if I have it here. Let's see. So this is the Yamsis web page for next year. Well, more information will be available here. Let me see if I. I just I had just asked them to upload a lot of things here, but this is not. Okay, let me see another uh, types of submissions. I think this is already there. Hopefully, let me see. Yeah. So we have, we can submit full papers. Full papers is a paper that involves or that deals with research that has been finished, but you can also submit papers to this emergent research forum. And notice that the emergent research forum uh, or the papers that are submitted here are research in progress. Right? Research in progress means you have not concluded the work yet. Like completed research uh, ERF, uh, so emergent research forum papers, will be submitted to a mini track for double blind review, so two people. Uh, the double here is not two people, but uh, at least two, two people will review your paper. 
Uh, it's double in the sense that you, you don't know who's reviewing your paper and whoever is reviewing it doesn't know you. Okay? Uh, upon acceptance, ERF papers will be presented by the author while uh, interested participants gather to share ideas and discuss topics of mutual interest. ERF papers must not exceed. The difference here is that an, an ERF paper has to be uh, five pages long or less, while a full paper is, it doesn't say here, but a full paper is 10 pages or less. I thought it's here. Must not exceed 10 pages. I know that some of you have papers that are already longer than that. Okay, I think Marina's paper, for example, I think it's longer than 10 pages. Does that mean that you cannot submit it to AMSIS? Well, that means that you will probably have to, um, to shorten it somehow. And what I usually do is, uh, uh, when, I, when, when I write a full paper, it's, it's research that we have already developed, uh, I don't care about the number of pages at the beginning. So, of course, I know that uh, a conference like AMSIS will only accept papers that are uh, 10 pages or less. I don't want to write a 50-page paper because it's going to be very difficult to shorten afterwards. But I aim at uh, in maybe writing a paper that is 20 pages long. Uh, and then what I do is after we have that paper finished, then I started seeing where I can cut and what, what parts do not need to be presented there. Um, and, uh, and, and I start uh, reducing the size of the paper. I usually do that. If I do it on words, I start uh, hiding uh, parts of the paper because after we and the reason why they don't want very long papers here is that after you publish your paper on a conference you may you may want to write an extended version of the paper to publish on a journal and most journals will say well I do accept papers that have already been published in a conference because I understand that a conference is a place where people go to show their their, their work and get other people's impressions they will get well the, the impressions of the reviewers they will be able to, to present their 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 work uh, to other um, to, to, to to other researchers and everything. But people go there to Im improve even their to improve their, their, the quality of their work still. So uh, if they're going to write a, a paper for the for a journal later, it, it doesn't make sense if it's exactly the same paper. So the idea here is even full papers on a conference are shorter because uh, journals will ask that a paper is at least thirty. 30% or 40% different to whatever previous versions uh, of it have been published in a conference. Uh, but but I, I find that sometimes I already have information that I will use in the journal paper afterwards. Uh, instead of uh, cutting it and losing it, I just mark it as, as, as hidden and uh, I, I, I fix the, 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 the paper, I adjust the paper to the size it has to, 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 to have for the conference, of course, it has to make sense. We always have to, to make sure that when we uh, we hide parts of the text, that whatever remains there still makes sense, right? It has to have, to have a flow and everything. So I, I, I work on that, uh, but, uh, but but I but but I but I usually keep it hidden there because after the conference, I go there and hide it or, or make it show again, and then start working on the version for the, the for the journal based on the comments that I got uh, from the from the participants of the conference, right? Uh, so even uh, I know that Anidis has, has not uh, submitted uh, a paper for our appreciation here. Uh, have a look at, at the AMSIS website. It's not all there yet. A few of the inform information will only be there early next year. But the the submission of these papers here, I don't know if this, this is where we have the, the dates here. Let me see where the dates are. Call. I think it's going to be in the call for papers. Yeah, here I think we have the dates. So uh, you will be able to submit papers to AMSIS from January 6 until, well, oh, it's wrong here, until it's not May 9, 2022, it's May 9, 2023, right? Uh, so, no, sorry, no, so March, March 1st, this is, this is a different thing. Uh, so you will be able to submit your papers to, to AMSIS until March 1st, 20, 2023. Uh, so this is where you should have your paper uh, absolutely ready to be submitted uh, and then after March uh, first uh, uh, a couple of reviewers will be assigned to your paper uh, they will have some time to, to review your papers uh, you may be asked to review other people's papers uh, I suggest that for, for AMSIS I usually suggest that uh, for you to be a, a reviewer you have to at least be a doctoral student right if you are for example Rogério 
Even if you submit a paper to AMSIS and then they ask you to review, uh, you should tell them, I'm, I'm still a master's student, I prefer to, to wait a, a, a little longer until I, I start uh, reviewing uh, in a more formal way. Because of course, here, in, in our case here, we, we are reviewing our, our colleagues' uh, work. Nobody is, is, is having their paper selected to, to anything, so there's no problem if, our, if we're still practicing our review. But when you review for a conference like AMSIS, the fact that you you think a, a paper is a good paper or a bad paper may affect the paper's choice to be part of the conference or not. So you, you have to be a little more careful. We don't want to reject people's work uh, unfairly, but we also do not want to help include a paper in a conference when we are still not very aware of the process. But anyway, uh, this is how it's going to happen. Uh, and uh, and um, this is going to be next year, it's going to be uh, in uh, it, it's um, this is always in August so where is that should be the first page here no. Let's see, just... this is when uh, um, this will happen in Panama next year from August 10 to August 12 and I, I mean all our effort here was to make sure that we have uh, more Latin Americans submitting papers to AMSIS. Um, it's it's a, a great year to be part of the conference because uh, Panama, as most of our Latin American uh, other countries, does not require uh, visas uh, from many from, from people from many of the other Latin American countries, uh, which means that the conference becomes less expensive for mainly for us here in Brazil. This is for Katia and, and Anirish to, to understand. Many times, if we need a, 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 a let's say a visa from the United States or from Canada. Uh, to, to go to a conference, uh, the, the trip that we have to do inside Brazil is sometimes as long as the trip that we have to, to, to do to, to, to go to the States afterwards. So it, it becomes very expensive when you have to, you, you need to do two international trips, let's say, if you, uh, to, 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 to participate in a conference like that, because uh, sometimes you just have to fly from, I don't know, from the northeast of Brazil to, to Sao Paulo to get a visa. Well, flying from the northeast of Brazil to Sao Paulo that's a longer flight than flying from from the northeast of Brazil directly to to Miami uh, or, or or maybe I'm not sure to New York, but uh, surely to, to Miami that will be shorter. And this this is why I think it's it's a good opportunity when when uh, AMSIS comes to one of the Latin American countries. And of course, we want when it comes to the Latin American country, is it's another opportunity for us to try and increase the number of participants from 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 our region here. So I hope uh, that these seminars have uh, made at least some of you consider submitting papers to, to AMSIS, although our purpose here is not necessarily AMSIS. Some of you who are from different uh, areas, uh, from different fields, and you don't want to write a paper on information systems, then then you, uh, I hope that at least uh, the, the topics that we discuss here and, and, and even this kind of information here about how the, the sessions or the parts of a paper, we, we hope that that helps you in your areas as well. Um, I don't know if you have any any questions, any ideas, any comments. Uh, today we'll again uh, finish early for two reasons. Uh, I mean, we finished. Uh, I, I don't have any additional material to discuss uh, with you here. And also for the Brazilians today, it's an important day because Brazil uh, plays uh, uh, in the World Cup in the afternoon. Uh, and well, for. Well, Katja also knows that because Katja, you're, you're German, right, Katja? Originally, I know that you have a DE, uh, so you know how important uh, the World Cup is for, for Latin Americans. Uh, uh, but, but we also know that it's very important for Germans, although this year they're not bothering too much about it any longer. Uh, and, and yeah, go on, Patricia. Meu professor, eu gostaria só de tirar uma dúvida, aproveitando que o professor está chegando ao fim, as notas da gente referente a essa disciplina, yeah, as, as soon as, well, uh, as soon as, as I've, well, well, maybe this is something that I should explain to you. It, it, it doesn't bother everyone, but it bothers some of you. Uh, this, uh, uh, I mean, whoever, whoever attended this uh, will uh, get, let's say, credits from a university here in Brazil, from my university, that maybe you can use uh, in, your, in your programs afterwards, right? Uh, those credits will be based uh, be, uh, mainly on, well, whoever has come all the way uh, to even writing a paper and, and submitting a, a paper is 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 
uh, uh, and also submitting the reviews of, of their colleagues' papers, those people will be considered for, I mean, I, I, my, the grading here is A, B, or C, right? Those will all be considered for, for an A. I still have to review the, the reviews, that uh, I still have to do some assessment, but uh, I, I expect that those of you who, who, who did all the, the tests will, 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 will probably get an A for these this seminars. Uh, uh, those of you who attended it, uh, and, I, and although I, I do not uh, keep an attendance list here, um, Google Meet gives me uh, the attendance every, after, after every class. So those of you who attended regularly uh, will probably uh, either receive a B, or and, and, and those of you who attended at least 70% of the meetings will get a C, right? Uh, of course, those who attended less than 70%, they will not get credits. Uh, the way it will happen uh, is I will send you uh, I, I will send you uh, information on how to get to, to the university's website and collect uh, directly from there uh, your, your your grading so that uh, and I know for example for Patricia's uh, program uh, maybe I don't know if for Marina's uh, for Flavius that may you, you, you may be able to use that in your universities as well but our main the, the main reason for the, the research seminars is that you learn something uh, uh, and uh, but everyone else, Katja, uh, Nidis, uh, you all, let's say, if one day you have to say, well, I, I did attend a, a course in a Brazilian university, you have that, uh, <laughs> that cert let's say, certificate. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and it seems that Marina has the same, uh, same situation there. Yeah, I, I'll do that over, still during this week, uh, I will have this done and, and sent to you. É, teacher, mais uma perguntinha aí para a gente uh, publicar no Panamá. Daí eu poderia, de repente, encaminhar para o professor, depois sem assim, meu artigo para o professor dar uma olhada? If I have time, I, I cannot promise, Patricia, it will depend on the, the, the time. If I have time, I'm, uh, okay. I, I, I can do that. If I don't, I will uh, I'll just tell you, Patricia, I, I looked at, uh, you know, I, I checked it the way I could, but uh, I cannot, you are some, you know, there are some... Well, today we, we, we have a small group here, but this group uh, has some 40 people, right? Okay. So if I get 40 papers to, to, to review and assess, that's going to be difficult. Uh, but send it to me. I mean, the know you already have, right? Uh, I may say, sorry, I can't do it now. Uh, then you already have that. Uh, uh, otherwise, if I have time, uh, by, 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 by the time that you, you do it, it will be a pleasure. Okay. Okay. All right, okay. Anything else, guys? No? Só, só gostaria de agradecer também é, a oportunidade, foi de grande valia. Oh, it's a pleasure, Flávio. Sei que o senhor aí tem muito tempo, não tem muito tempo, né? Então, assim, ajudou bastante, tá? Muito obrigado. Oh. Yeah, uh, 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 you know, I, it's not that I don't have time. Uh, it's it's just that uh, sometimes, uh, you know, sometimes of the of the year things get really really crazy. For example, this next week I'll be doing a, a review for a Saudi Arabian university, and I'll be waking at at two o'clock in the morning because it, I, I'm doing it's virtual, but I'll, I'll do their timing, and it will start on Sunday this week, and it will go for four or five days. So, for example, if if I don't send you the the info about. Uh, you know uh, 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 about your the, the, this course until Friday. That means that you will only get it uh, someone close to the twentieth because uh, I'll be out of uh, 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 out of contact for 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 at least uh, for, for for at least four or five days then. Okay. All right, guys. Tendo tendo algum algum outro evento algum curso ou palestra do dia, se puder me convidar. Sure, sure. No, what I'll do is well, yeah next year uh, what I have what I have planned for the first semester. I have a a of course it's a it's, it's a smaller group but I, I do if, if it interests anyone uh, we do a course on collective intelligence that is basically trying to understand how our information and communication technologies um, um, have been used by humans to turn us into a more collective let's say to, to, to a more intelligent collective than we are individually of course for the last Five or six years, at least, at least uh, since uh, um, since uh, Trump was elected in the United States, and, and 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 where we and after that, where we had all these echo chambers forming everywhere in the world. Brazil, Brazil is no exception, uh, and uh, I, 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 we are also discussing a little bit of collective stupidity, not only collective intelligence, but we still do think that our technologies can help us become smarter as 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 a group. And I teach a a course that is uh, during the first semester. Of the year, uh, I will 
tell you about it if anyone is interested. Uh, you, you can be formally enrolled or you can just say, well, I want to watch it and, 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 and see how things go. But I, I'll tell you about that. Okay. All right? Okay, guys. So, see you guys. Bye. See you. Bye. Bye.